Welcome along to tutorial 4 where we are learning how to code using Python. In today's video we are going to take things just a little bit further uh, from tutorial 3 where we started asking users some questions. In today's video we're basically going to ask multiple questions to the user. Um, we're going to store those responses that they give us and then display a message back to them using those um, answers to the questions we ask. Okay, so to get started, we're going to open up a new file in the Mew, and in line one of our code, we simply want to ask a question. So we use the keyword input. Okay, we learned that in tutorial three. And once we've written the word input, we're going to ask the basic question, what is your name? Now remember from last tutorial two, we don't want to put a question mark at the end. We're going to put a colon instead, and we're going to put a space close our quotation marks, and then close our brackets. Then we're going to ask two more questions. Okay, they're going to be written basically the same way. So input is our keyword that we use first. This time, we're going to ask the question, what is your age? And the final question is our favorite sporting team. So we're going to say, what is, I'll say, who is your favorite sporting team? Alrighty, so they're the three questions that we're going to be asking our user. So let's save that and just test it to make sure they're asking them okay. I'll just save it as asking multiple questions. And we'll run this code. First question works okay. Second question works okay. And the third question works okay. Okay, so we've got our computer asking the user three questions just fine. What we want to do next is we want to get the computer to remember the responses that the user gives us. So we want to store the values that the user types in. So we want to remember their name, their age, and their favorite sporting team. If the computer can remember them, then we can reuse those responses later on when we print a message back to the screen. Okay, so... Think back to last tutorial, we talked about variables. That's what we need to do here. We need to create three new variables that are going to store the name, the age, and the sporting team. Okay. Now, if you forget what I was talking about with variables last lesson, have a look at this little slideshow I've got here. We need to think of variables as buckets. Buckets that hold information inside of them that we can tip over and reuse again later on. So in this program, we're going to have three buckets or three variables as they're officially known. The first one called name, the second one called age, and the third one called team. Okay, now when the user answers the first question, they write their name into the program. Okay, we want the computer to remember that name. So in this case, it's going to be Tim. So we type in Tim and we press enter, and that gets stored in the first bucket called name, or the first variable called name. The second question we ask is, how old are they? In my case, it's going to be 36. So I type in 36, press enter, and that gets stored in the age bucket or the age variable. And finally, we ask for the favorite sporting team. I'll say the Sydney Swans. It will get saved into the team variable or the team bucket. Okay, now these three buckets are full with their information. Um, once we have got them saved in there, we can then reuse them later on. We just need to dip into that bucket and pull out the information that we just saved in there. So let's give these three lines variable names like we just did in that example. The first one was called name, second one was called age, third one was called team. Okay, so now what the user types in will be stored in these three variables, name, age, and team. All right, so I'll save that. We don't need to run it though because nothing's changed with how our program's going to run just yet. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to display a message back to the user that says, hello, Tim, your age is 36 and your favorite sporting team is the Sydney Swans. Okay, so we'll break it down and we'll do it step by step. The first thing we want to do is we want to get our program to display the user's name. Okay, so to display a message, we use the keyword print and in brackets and quotation marks, we'll say, hello, and then put a comma, space, and close your quotation marks. Now to get this name, or the information out of the name bucket, you need to put a plus sign and write in the variable, 
which is called name. Okay, so whatever the user typed in, into name, it's saved in that bucket. Okay, the computer will now reach into that bucket and pull that name out and type it into there. Okay, let's close the brackets, save it, and we'll run it and we'll see if our program prints hello plus the user's name. So my name's Tim, I'm 36, and I like swans. Okay, at the moment it's saying hello Tim. Perfect. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to get the computer to say our age back to us. Okay, so the computer says hello, and we attach our name to the end of that. What we're going to do now is just delete that last, whoop, delete that last bracket, and we put another plus sign in. We're adding more to this sentence, so that's why that plus sign has been added in. And we add in quotation marks. Okay, we're going to actually put a full stop to start with here. That closes off that first sentence that says, Hello, Tim, and then we put a full stop. Coming in after that full stop, we'll say, You are this many years old. Okay, so we need to write, You are, close the quotation marks, put in a plus sign, and we put the keyword there, the variable, age. Then we put a plus sign, and more quotation marks, and just finish off the sentence. So you are, it'll say 36 years old. Full stop, close the quotation marks, close the bracket. Now you'll also notice that I included a space here before the word years. So after it tells me my age, it just puts a space and then says years old. Okay, so it'll say, hello Tim, you are 36 years old. Let's save it, run it, and we'll see what happens. So Tim's my name, 36, favourite sporting team is the Swans. Here's the message, hello Tim, you are 36 years old. Okay, sounding good. Last thing we need to put in is our favourite sporting team. Okay, so to do that, Let's delete this bracket on the very end of this sentence. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see me finish this sentence. I'm going to delete those quotation marks too. We don't need them there just yet. So it says, you are this many years old. We'll just start the new sentence saying, your favourite sporting team is... Put a space, close the quotation marks, put a plus sign, and we're going to put in the variable team. Okay, so we'll reach into that team bucket, pull out whatever it was we saved before. So in my case, it'll be the Sydney Swans. And to finish off with, I'm just going to, I know it's annoying, put another plus sign and inside quotation marks, I'm going to put a full stop and then close the bracket to finish that whole sentence off. Okay, so it'll say, hello, Tim, you are 36 years old. Your favourite sporting team is, I'll put the... Just there is the, and then we'll say Sydney Swans with a full stop on the end and a bracket to finish things off. All right, save it and run that code. Let's see how we go. I'm going to stretch this out. My mouse wants to play nice. Oops. So my name is Tim, 36 years old. My favourite sporting team is the Sydney Swans. Let's see it in a sentence. Hello, Tim. You are 36 years old, your favourite sporting team is the Sydney Swans. So you can see I did put in a space here between the and Sydney. So you have to be careful with that. We'll go back and do that now. So is the so after the word the I just needed to put in a space after those or before those quotation marks and that will fix my error. Alright, now one thing I want to do is I want to put in an empty line in between the questions and then the response that's outputted afterwards, after we've asked those questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in print bracket bracket. What that does is it just prints nothing on the screen. It gives you an empty line. Okay, so if I just save it and run it, I'll show you what that actually means. So I'll ask my name, my age, my sporting team. See how it's left an empty line here now in between the questions and what we display back to the user? just makes it a little bit nicer to look at, a bit more pleasing to the eye where all the text isn't just bunched together. Okay, so you can see that mistake I had before where I didn't have a space between the and the sporting team. It's got the space there now, so that looks good. So that's our code all working and looking good. 
So one last thing I want to show you though in this video, and I want to talk about something called comments. Comments are some things that we add into our code to explain to other people what is actually going on inside this code. Okay, so an example I'll give you. This line here that says print bracket bracket. Okay, somebody that doesn't understand code very well might look at that and say, what the hell does that mean? What we can do is add in a comment to our code that actually tells people what this code is actually doing. So I'm going to put in a hashtag to start my comment. And in plain simple English, I'm just going to say display an empty line. Because that's exactly what that line of code does. Now when the computer sees a hashtag, it ignores any text after it on that line. Okay, so as soon as the computer reads all this code and gets up to this spot and sees the hashtag, it's like, right, that's a comment. I don't need to read that. I don't need to process that code. So I'm going to skip over it and just go to the next line and start processing from there. All right. So in your code from now on, I want you to get in the habit of adding in comments where you tell the user or tell people that are reading your code, sorry, what is actually happening. Okay, in just plain, simple English. So I'm going to do another one up the top here where we're asking three questions. Okay, I'm just going to put in a comment above them with a hashtag to start. And I'll just say, ask the user three questions. Okay, and that just tells me what's going on in this section of code. It's asking the user three simple questions. Okay, and down here where we've got this other print where it prints that gigantic sentence. Okay, let's tell people what's going on. So I'll put a hashtag and we'll say display a message to the user. You don't have to be super specific about what's going on in your code. Okay, just give me a rough understanding of what's going on. So we're displaying a message to the user and that's what that line is doing there. All right, so you've learned quite a bit um, in this video. Again, we've recapped on how to ask questions by using the input keyword. We've looked at how we can store their responses in variables. So we've got three variables here called name, age, and team. You've learned how to print or display an empty line on the screen. And you've learned how to join together this gigantic sentence here. So we've been adding all the variables from up above into our final sentence. Okay. So um, that's about all we need to know um, for this tutorial. I was just thinking on this last line here, when you actually are joining all these words together, there is a word that describes that. It's called concatenating. Um, so you've been concatenating your sentence and variables together there, okay, or joining them together. All right, so that's all I need to show you in this video. Um, I'll catch you in the next one where we'll learn something new.